Hey guys, Wonklo here. I hope all of you are doing well and having a really good day. In today's video, I want to talk about Jupyter Aggregator and what the version 2 beta currently offers. So let's get started. <music> As you can see, we are currently on the website of Jupyter Aggregator and I have loaded up my Phantom Wallet and I connected it to the Jupyter.aggregator website and we are currently using the V2 beta as you can see in the top left corner. We also could switch back to the version 1 but in today's video I want to bring you a couple of features that Ben Show recently showed us on the Helium Discord a little bit closer that you can understand what you actually can do with the newest version of Jupyter and why this is so great. So in the first place if you haven't watched the video about how to swap your IoT mobile or HNT token on the Solana chain. Check out one of my latest videos that I explain to you how you can actually swap your tokens so that you can use Solana or Helium or whatever token you wanna uh, want to use on the Solana network to get them. So in the the first thing we have been taught by Ben was that there is actual a greater feature about the new graphs that they show here. So if I would say I select the HNT to be the token that I want to receive and for example I choose my IoT token that I want to sell or swap for HNT token I now can see that they uh, that there are a couple of lines graphs basically that are showing me a quite accurate graph of what the current swap would look like and what the actual value compared of those two tokens is. So in this example that we can see the IoT token is losing a little bit of it, its value while the HNT token is gaining a little bit of value. Overall this would mean that your IoT token is been less valuable than a couple days or weeks before this. Uh, as we can see this is currently showing in, in hours, like every hour this has been updated. Probably uh, this graph is about the last two days. So that's a great feature that you can instantly see how the current uh, token that you're trying to swap is in comparison to the token that you want to receive. So that's a, this is a really cool feature about this. The next thing that he taught us is that we now have the option to set up our own slippage settings. And if you don't know what slippage is, in short context, slippage is a difference of a price that you appreciate or allow to be executed to get you tokens that you finally want to receive. As an example, if I say I want to sell 100 IoT token for HNT and the normal slippage is probably around uh, 1%, 0.5% uh, or less. On, on Jupyter, I, I guess Jupyter, the, the default value is 0.5, um, but you can change it up here. So the thing is, I want to exchange 100 IoT token for a certain amount of HNT token. And in this current moment, they're trying to calculate the value or the receiving amount of HNT that I would receive for this IoT amount of tokens that I'm trying to sell. But while I'm pressing on the button for swap, it might be possible that the price increased, decreased or changed overall. So that's where slippage comes in. You have a pre-selected percentage that allows them to execute your orders in a certain direction upwards, downwards of the actual price. So if you set this up to the default value of 0.5%, you are fine that you will receive 0.5% less tokens of what you have been prompted on this website. For example, that's not bad. That is a common sense and that's been used in probably all the decentralized exchanges and uh, aggregating functionalities that we see. So therefore, this is a great feature. But they now introduced the slippage settings. And uh, I, I think 0.5, yeah, as I said, is 0.5% is the uh, default value, but you can set up a custom one. And therefore I will put in 0.01% so that I do not really accept any changes in price appreciation or devaluing of, of the actual change that I'm trying to do. And I can save this. And now I can click on swap and I can try to approve this. And let's see, it has been approved. So I actually was able to swap this with a slippage of 0.01%. And that's 
absolutely amazing. So you are not willing to lose a certain amount of tokens. The thing is, if you w if you're trying to to sell a higher amount of tokens, for example, ten thousands of IOT, the probability that your slippage will be exceeded is a little bit higher due to the fact that it always needs a person that is trying to sell at a certain amount of tokens. So you need someone who, who is willing to give you this amount of token for the amount of token that you're trying to sell. And uh, if those requirements are not set, your order will not get executed and will not go through. And you might face issues if you're trying to sell higher amounts of tokens. Uh, especially when it comes to IoT, mobile or HNT, due to the fact that there is uh, the, the volume of those is quite volatile on, on this platform or on all the decentralized exchanges. Another great thing about this is that you will always receive what you see because they try to execute your order as fast as possible. And I will talk about a different type of order in just a second. But before we do that, let's take a look on what these uh, two hops via Orca is showing here. If we click on this, we can actually see what the route would be to get our final token. As we know, we want to exchange IoT token and we want to receive HNT token. And Jupyter Aggregator is searching over a couple of decentralized exchanges and is trying to find the best price appreciation for you so that you can get actually the amount of tokens that you want to receive. And they have the feature here, the order routing, that you can actually take a look on where they're trying to execute your orders and how they're trying to execute your orders. So what this means is if I would sell the 10,000 IoT token, the first thing that would go through would be a exchange from IoT to mobile, and then they would exchange the mobile to HNT, and then I receive my HNT. It might look like a little bit a complicated route, but what they're trying to do is to give you the best price appreciation and the best price for your actual swap that you're trying to do. As you can see, it now updated and uh, now I can instantly get my HNT amount on Orca due to the fact that somebody was probably uh, willing to sell their HNT for IoT. So all this, what's happening in the background is reloading every single second a couple of times. And uh, if we want to swap, for example, HNT to, uh, let's take Solana and uh, we want to sell 10,000 HNT, we can see that now the route looks a little bit more different. Now they tell us, okay, you can instantly swap 60% of this on Orca to receive Solana, but then probably the pool of people who are willing to sell is not there any longer. And now we need to take a look on other exchanges. Then they take 30% and go to Radium. So I can uh, exchange 3000 HNT on Radium to get my Solana. And then the pool on Radium is basically empty and there are no more people willing to give me this amount of Solana for my HNT. So we need to take a look on other routes that we can take. And the last 10%, they get exchanged to USDC because they know, okay, there's somebody willing to exchange HNT to USDC or basically the other round, uh, the other way around, uh, somebody's willing to give their USDC to receive HNT, uh, roughly 1000 HNT, and then we can swap this USDC to Solana and uh, finally receive everything. And sure, this is probably multiple transactions in one swap, but then at the end of the day, Jupyter Aggregator is trying to give you the best price and the best price appreciation over all different platforms that they are connected to. So they always make sure that you get the best price. And even if it needs to split up your amount that you want to receive in multiple transactions, they will do this and they will bring up the transactions that they go through the blockchain. So I hope that you now understand the way of how everything is working a little bit better. And I want to talk about the I want to talk about the last topic that Ben introduced to us. And this was the limit order. It's a little bit the same as you think of traders. Uh, I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with trading. But when it comes to trading, you can choose how you want to trade or exchange tokens, you can either say, 
uh, say, okay, I want to execute my order now, and therefore I allow a certain amount of slippage, as I explained to you in the first place. So I'm willing to accept a price difference of a certain percentage, or you could say, no, I want to sell my tokens X amount and receive another token X amount. And I'm not willing to take any slippage. I want to receive this. So you set a limit order and that is what they released here as well in the V2. And I want to talk a, a little bit more about this due to the fact that we could now say that we want to sell only one HNT and we want to receive Solana. And this will probably go through really quickly. Um, if I take the current market price, uh, I can click on use market and now it's uh, using the market price and I will probably receive instantly my Solana due to the fact that there are a couple of people willing to give me this amount of Solana um, at the current time. But let's say I want to receive for one HNT one Solana token. I could set this up and this limit, uh, this limit order will be uh, going to the, <clears throat> I'm sorry. and this limit order will actually go into the system and the system will have a order book. So they write down everybody who is willing to uh, execute an order at what price or what uh, actual exchange for another token. And now there appears my one HNT to one Solana uh, order that I put up if I would place this limit order. And as long as nobody is willing to give one Solana for one HNT, this order will never be executed. But I could set this up and I could wait. So. For example, if you have a couple of HNT, IoT or other tokens laying around and you want to receive a certain amount of token, uh, the current market price for one HNT is 0.06 Solana. And let's say uh, we want to get uh, 12.12 uh, Solana, we could set this limit order up. Uh, we can even set up an expiration date for this, uh, maybe the next seven days and then I could actually sell this HNT at the current or at the price that I want to receive at this date. And this would then be executed by the Jupyter aggregator system at the current time when somebody is willing to give this certain amount of token for the amount of token that I have been presented over there. Um, let's take my actual HNT amount that I have in this wallet is <laughs> roughly 18 cents. And uh, I want to receive for this 0.12 HNT, I want to receive 0.99 Solana. I could set up this limit order and this will be in the order book. And as soon as somebody is willing to give 0.99 Solana for this amount of HNT that I have set up in the order book, the transaction will be executed and I will receive my Solana in my wallet. So therefore what you could do with this, if you're wondering, is that you could easily set up orders for the future if you believe that the price will go up. So that's basically a great feature that you can set up for future swaps or that you can even uh, set up a order that will only go through if a certain amount or a certain value has been reached by the exchange or for, from, for the exchange rate. So your price is going up and uh, you already have set up your actual order for this. I hope this was understandable and that you guys enjoyed this. I will probably make a couple more videos about Jupiter and what you can do and what you cannot do with this. And if you like the video, give me a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel and stay tuned till the next one.